Stefan, or I mean, Steve, or, shit, my bad, man. Mustafa Shakur, born August 18th, 1984. It's your boy JC, Stunted Growth. As you get it, man. Today's feature is a guy that was so ahead of his time. A top five point guard in his class, ranked right behind potential Hall of Famer Chris Paul, a McDonald's All-American and Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Pennsylvania. He was expected to do big things coming out of high school and was considered a one and done or at least two year athlete in college before he'd go on to dominate the NBA. That didn't even come close to happening, and here's why. Stunt number one, in any other era, Shakur grew up in the Philadelphia area. As a junior, he'd average 18 points, six rebounds, four assists, and two steals a game. After the season, he signed on to play at Arizona. As a senior, he averaged 26 points, six assists, and four steals a game, while earning USA Today High School Boys All-USA First Team, EA Sports All-American, ABCD Camp All-Star and First Team All-State. He also was the Gatorade Pennsylvania Player of the Year and McDonald's All-American. He was even rated number one at some point as a senior. Next in line of great Arizona guards like Gilbert Arenas, Jason Terry, and Damon Stoudemire. He was the next one up. He just didn't have the skills to fit that era. This was a time where Allen Iverson and smaller guards dominated the scene. It was all about being super quick and having a smooth, deadly crossover in your bag. Mustafa had none of those things. Instead, he was a heady guard that was a great system runner, rebounder, and transition type of player. Sounds familiar? Probably because he'd fit right into this current era. Big guards that could be a Kyle Lowry type of run the show and do the intangible things. You may say, well, how would he fit into this era if he couldn't shoot at all? That's true, but that era, shooting wasn't what guys were perfecting. It was more being flashy and athletic. Had he developed in this era, he'd probably work on his jumper more and be straight, but let's not ignore that. Stunt number two, you're right. Shakur had a funky jumper, especially when he first entered Arizona. He shot the ball basically two-handed and was urged by his coaching staff to change that if he wanted to play in the league. Boy, if he only knew how important that would be. Lute Olsen said he'd work endlessly trying to change Mustafa's J, and to begin his second year in Arizona, it was noticeably better, just still not right. I never understand, and I never will, a hard worker that can't fucking shoot the ball, man. If you don't at least have a good form, what the fuck are you doing in the gym? See, not all gym rats are created equal. You have guys that are in there just playing pickup all day, or one-on-one, -on -one, three on three, and not working on themselves. A shooting form is the first thing you learn. How do we have guys like this in the league? Well, league is something Mustafa could write off for the next four years. Not having a jump shot was a big reason. As a freshman, he'd average just over nine points per game and four assists. His averages actually dipped as a sophomore, the year he was expected to blossom. Instead, he averaged just eight points per game and four assists. Although his shooting averages weren't terrible, he didn't shoot that much at all, and it was because he couldn't really. As a junior, he averaged 11 points per game and four assists again, and decided to test the waters of the NBA, quickly realizing his chances were not much and withdrew, returning for his senior year. By this time, though, it was over, man. Scouts had already determined this guy just wasn't getting any better. He was a big guard, but he didn't use it. No post game and below average rebounding skills at just three a game for his career. He wasn't quick at all and couldn't shoot. At least Kyle Lowry was blazing fast in college. As a senior, he averaged 11 points per game again and upped his assist to six, but the writing was already on the wall. Stunt number three, stay long, stay wrong. Look, my advice to any player that's in the early stages of their career, as in freshman or sophomore, and have an inkling of first round chances, leave, leave, leave. Don't come back to school, man. Leave, and trust you'll get better with all that free time and pro facilities to get you right. Staying a long time puts a stigma on your back and really sets you back if you look at the history of the game. Potential is more valuable than reality in basketball. 
Had he left after his freshman year and just said fuck it, he would have went drafted no doubt, even with his jump shot. I mean, needless to say, he did go undrafted, signed to a bunch of summer league squads over the years, but couldn't catch on. Eventually, being a journeyman overseas in the G League up until last season, he had a shot, couldn't shoot though. Stayed too long and was just not right for the time. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out.